Welcome to Let's Talk Motorsport, a show where a couple of blokes have fun chatting all things motor racing. My name is Daniel, and finally, I'm welcome with Ivan once again. Of course, you guys weren't with me next uh, last weekend, and unfortunately, Alex isn't with us today. So I hope he's doing well. But uh, Ivan, how you been, man? I've been well. I've been well. Thanks for having me again. And uh, yeah, we're missing the third musketeer off the show today. Um, fortunately, Alex uh, could not be with us, uh, but we got plenty that happened in motorsport to talk about today. So I'm keen. Let's get right into it. Absolutely. Let's start off with the biggest event of the year, I guess we could say. The Le Mans 24-hour, the iconic 24-hour. And uh, unlike the Nürburgring 24-hour, it actually was a 24-hour race. And uh, what a beautiful one that was. Yes, of course. You know, it's the race of the immortals, you know, a, a podium or a win in Le Mans uh, and you become, you know, part of history. It is one of the biggest, if not the biggest uh, event of the year. It's the one everybody wants to win. It's the one that uh, all the manufacturers put their best foot forward to win. And uh, what an exciting race it was. Indeed. And uh, it all started uh, when Penske had the front row start, but uh, it was Ferrari um, who took the early lead. Uh, what a cracking one that was. And then we saw a few shunts. Uh, BMW, what a weekend they had. A uh, weekend to forget, probably, I uh, reckon. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Valentino Rossi's team and the entire crew at BMW uh, don't want to hear about Le Mans until next year. I think it was a, a shocker. But it was really interesting, you know, the, the um, Penske car had a lot of pace in the, um, in the qualifying sessions. But from lap one, the Ferraris just came out, came out of nowhere. Um, I felt really bad for Kubica. I think his team were driving brilliantly. Um, you could also see in the in the chats, you know, how disappointed people were for the yellow Ferrari. How good? How good does the yellow Ferrari look? It was beautiful. I love it, and that it, it haunts me every day because uh, Ferrari didn't use a full yellow livery back in Monza for Formula One. Yes, last year, but uh, at least Le Mans, they're rocking it, and my God, it is sensational. Yeah, so overall, um, a very, very interesting race. Uh, um, Alpine seem to follow on their uh, current rhythm of Formula One. They have beautiful looking cars. Uh, they sound great. But when it came to reliability, they both, within a lap of each other, they both DNF'd with engine problems. Hey, at least they're consistent. <laughs> they are consistent. Yes, yes, yes. But, no, it's a real shame. Like you say, like you said, it is actually a really beautiful looking car. Um, their presentation and sensational. They just need to work um, their reliability. Um, and like I said, in Formula One as well, they need to sort that out. Um, so it is unfortunate. Uh, we did see a few wrecks and whatnot, but uh, one thing I'm really shocked for is uh, back in the GT3 class, uh, Shahin's with Manti EMA. Incredible. Incredible. A local... A local from South Australia, you know, a lot of people um, underestimate just how good of a driver um, he is and, and how good of a driving the whole family, you know, is marinated in, in motorsport. You know, they were the driving force behind Tail and Bend, um, which is now, you know, Shell Motorsport Park. And what an incredible achievement for, for a South Australian, you know, to hold the flag high, you know, to, to win in Le Mans in the GT3 class. Yeah, you, you either love or hate him, um, but you got to acknowledge the fact that it's such an amazing achievement um, for the country as well. Um, it's fantastic, and he truly deserves it. Um, I, I remember their Bathurst 12-hour race that they had at the beginning of the year. They won that one uh, beautifully as well. So they're definitely um, carrying that pace on from um, from then up to now. Um, it's looking for a good, uh, good year for them. Yeah, absolutely. I think the Porsche team is super professional. I think that the the way that the the three drivers are driving, you know, it's it's look. I mean, to win a twenty four hour race, there is just so many things that have to go your way, and so many things that are out of your control that it just all must come together. And it did. It beautifully came together for them. Unfortunately for Valentino Rossi and uh, his team. Uh, one of the co-drivers that was in during the night stint. It was really weird. I don't know if you saw it, but he went off track. He came back onto the track. And then as soon as he went on the power, 
it just steered into the wall and that that was that was all she wrote yeah, it was really unfortunate um because um i was i had a busy weekend and as soon as i, I was like if hey, how's how's the weekend going at the moment and then you said rossi's out I was like, I was so gutted. Well, um, yeah, because I, I went to bed, Rossi leading, you know, they, they were leading the GD3 class. And then I wake up and I'm, as soon as I woke up, I was straight away, I'm looking for the 46, 46, 44, 46, where's 46? <laughs> and then, um, yeah, unfortunately, that's uh, that's what took place. But overall, a terrible weekend for BMW. Oh, horrible. And like, I, I just, believe uh, just shocking. One of them actually damaged the barrier so bad that we actually had like an hour delay. Yes. Um, was that was if I'm correct? That was that a was a, that was a BMW. Um, so unfortunately, uh, it was an hour long safety car. Um, but uh, also that wasn't the only thing that happened. The heavens started to open up, and it started to rain on the circuit. Um, and this was the second year in a row that hmm. uh, the race uh, had quite a lot of rain during the the, the course of the 24 hours. Hmm. Um, we had an Aston Martin roll over while trying to. That was a big one. That was big. That is a big crash. <laughs> um, he was just simply trying to get out of the way, but then went onto a wet patch. And but a lot of cars went off in that corner. Oh, we saw so many. Um, yeah. Especially there was a on because it was a typical motorsport debate: slick tires. Um, yes. Because you know it wasn't going to rain for forever, um, so they were gambling. But unfortunately, it didn't pay off for a couple teams, and they did slide off easily. Um, but it did uh, create some chaos, especially for the towards the back end of the race, where yes. it was a Ferrari v Toyota. Um, that was a cool race, <laughs> and it really was a Ferrari versus Toyota. I mean, they went uh, head to head. I mean, in the end, like it was only like a fifteen second gap, which after twenty four hours of racing, you know, it was a lot harder this year for Ferrari compared to last year in terms of in in terms of of winning the race. But there were so many highlights. I mean, at one stage we had three hypercars, you know, going three wide into a particular corner. Uh, I think, you know, again, the 83 Ferrari, if it hadn't not been for those electrical dramas, I think they would have been right there in the mix. But with, you know, four hours to go, there was still seven cars that could have oh, yeah. won it. So you had no idea who was going to win. Like, correct. You confident of, yeah, this guy's going to win. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. And, and I think overall, you know, for those people that um, perhaps maybe, are not into endurance racing at the moment or have always, you know, you know, not considered it, watch a race, you know, like watch the highlights of the of the 24 hour. There is so much teamwork that goes into it. There's so much strategy involved in it. But overall, it's a it's a spectacular event every every single year. And speaking of spectacular, um, just shouting out the overall win. Um second time in a row. Oh yeah. Ferrari. Forza, Forza Ferrari. Uh, it was a beautiful Sunday for Italy. Uh, they won their opening match of Euro 2024, and we won Le Mans back to back. Uh, it's uh, it, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. There's so much emotion in that in that pit box. Uh, both drivers, uh, you know, they just couldn't help themselves just before they crossed the finish line, and just the whole team. You know, just how much it means. You know how much preparation goes into these and, you know, to be the one. And you saw Toyota, you know, they were absolutely gutted. Yeah. You know, you could just, uh, you know, you could drop a pin in that garage. You know, they it, they were close, but not close enough. That's the thing with motor racing. See, it's not like they, you know, they put in so much effort, um, both teams. Um, anyone literally could have won that till the very end. But uh, I think it's what's really interesting is that we've spoken so much about the hypercars and the GD3s, but yeah. the LMP2s just get left. Yeah, they're very. Yeah, they're they just exactly. get left. Nobody talks about them. You know, they. Um, but, you know, again, uh, very competitive field. Um, some super, super professional teams in there. I think what's exciting about endurance racing at the moment as well was the amount of um, former world champions, mm -hmm. Formula One car drivers. There's just so many good quality people now. Very experienced. You know, it's not like back in the day, you know, like uh, there's so many good people out there at the moment in endurance racing. And yeah, it's just exciting. Yeah, definitely. And then on that note, let's run through the top three from each class. That's how we're going to do it. Uh, so starting off with the hypercars, obviously number 50, Ferrari, uh, AF Corsa. Uh, in second place, we've got um, number seven, Toyota. And uh, a one third for Ferrari, number 51, um rounding up the podium there unfortunately like we said we couldn't see number 83 
um, with the beautiful yellow car, but unfortunately, it is what it is with the uh, endurance. They'll, but, be, uh, they'll be back next year. Oh, definitely, for sure. They work quick. Uh, LMP2, as we uh, noted, uh, number 22, United Autosports won that class uh, ahead of number 34, Inter Europol con- competition. And then IDEC Sport is in third position. And then the LMGT3 class, as we mentioned, number 91, Manthai EMA. Well done. And, uh, Shahin winning there, bringing one home for Australia. Uh, number 31, Team WRT. And then rounding up the podium for that one is number 88, Proton Competition.